my mind's racing fast, trying to find the red flags I'm used to. All these green lights, are they coming too soon? Cut between red and the green, and you, I'm stuck in the blue. Value how I'm feeling. How do you have so much time? Been searching for a reason for why you'd love a chip design. Aren't you listening to me now? Screamed all my secrets. Why don't you leave them? Ooh. Is it too good to be true? I want this so much, but don't know if I can trust you. My mind's racing fast, trying to find the red flags I'm used to. All these green lights, are they coming too soon? Caught between red. Covering up your tracks. 
Hui. <lacht> Ludwig, you are alone. You are muted yourself. One moment, there is something uh, with my camera. This is live. <laughs> the last, the last uh, show is, uh, yeah, a little bit crying, and uh, this is the beginning. Great. Hi, Ludwig. How are you? Um, I cannot hear you. You are muted, still muted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, boy, it's, well, yeah. it's a good start. Maybe because of yesterday, um, we lost one uh, show. Can you, can you say something about it? What, what, what went wrong yesterday? No, I mean, we wanted to come uh, go, uh, get back the uh, keynote speaker from Zimbabwe and the musician, but somehow it didn't work first time they didn't have connection and i don't know what happened yesterday yeah so we are fresh <laughs> and energetic for this last show and uh, the last shows are here about courage and hope that's kind of the subtitle of it we want to talk about uh, this next to you mm. know um, other facts or inter interviewing people but this is kind of the over Arching theme tonight. From Greece during the show, uh, what can you say about them? Yes, uh, this, uh, so we, we always in the show like have one keynote speaker or you know a re report or anything, and also a musician. So today we we mix uh, Greece with South Africa and Kavala with Pretoria, so that's a great uh, Kalinichta and good evening. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and uh, Kavala is a really nice port city in Macedonia, in the northeast of Greece. And uh, some years ago I went there uh, to, to work, uh, do some workshops, and I met some really lovely people, good friends, meanwhile. Uh, and I want to introduce to you tonight Ha Lampos Tsirokidis, uh, who is an architect, and his young team or the NGO called Opsometa. And they're doing really great work, which with our new kind of language, we would describe as service design, you know, so they, they do engage for the region they're living in, um, developing it, uh, this ancient side of Philippi. I, I didn't know uh, to this time that Kavala was kind of next to this very important city in history. Um, and it's a great place you will you will see later. And as our music guest, we have Ito Sings from Pretoria, South Africa. And welcome him again uh, because he was here some nights before, and that's we said he has to come back tonight. And look who's else there! Yeah. <laughs> our co-host uh, Peter. Yes, and Urs. our co-host from uh, this is Urs uh, on the above me from Switzerland, and. Uh, It to sings is yeah. It to sings is to to, to the side. <laughs> don't don't mix them. Don't mix them. You know. Uh, Urs, hello. How are you? Hi. Nice to meet you, Ludwig. Nice to meet you, Stefan, Ito. Oh, that's great. Hey, Ludwig. I. I stayed here for a few evenings with you, and I'm so surprised. I'm so surprised how many people you know. People from Mexico, from Ecuador, from South Africa, from Zimbabwe. I'm, and I'm impressed. Even my wife doesn't know me sometimes, but you, <laughs> it looks like you are at home all over the world. 
and and I know you in Switzerland. I mean, this is 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 very exceptional. I mean, you you're very special because you know we are all young people, but you are you know you're old. You have seen life. I mean, we have maybe seen the world, but you have seen life. So that's why I choose you to to be with us to have somebody experienced. You know, who knows about life back and forth, and and that's why you're on our team as a host. And also. Lots of people are writing um, and want some autocrum carton. <laughs> some <laughs> signing. Some, signing how cards. is it called in English? <laughs> yeah. Fan card or what? Fan card, card from yours. So, um, what do you and say about this? And what is your woman saying? Or, or your women? Or your all your women's and f <laughs> girlfriends? What they are saying yeah, about he, your? He's getting love letters even. Yeah, what they are saying. <laughs> Which which one do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> you mean which of your wives or which of, uh, of your girlfriends? How many how, how many girlfriends did you have in your long life? Oh, I think uh, too much, <laughs> much too much. I think so. Uh, that's where you, is that's where your gray hair is from, or what? Yeah, yeah. I think so. <laughs> yeah, I think if you want to be as old as me, you need uh, you need a lot of uh, hope. Yeah, and uh, and if you want to have a lot of hope, do you know which? Which, uh, what do you need for to 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 uh, to our hot soul when you are eight, eight, 98 or 89 years old? <laughs> you yeah, need, yeah, you need. That, that, tell me, please, because that's really I want to know. Yeah, you need long sleep. Yeah, first, long, long sleep, second. Good humor, yeah. And third, sometimes a bottle of wine. Oh wow! <laughs> sometimes only. That's that's fair. That's fair enough. I mean, do, do, which one do you have open tonight? <laughs> a grease, a grease one. Oh, that's uh, a white wine, the best wine in the from world. South Africa <laughs> and a red wine from Greece. Yeah, it's, it's, Stefan. <laughs> yeah, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Actually, you will you will have friends immediately in Kavala because uh, the area there, uh, Macedonia, has also great vineyards, great wineries, and uh, you should go there and taste them. It's it's really fabulous. So. Great. And um, do you have you have you ever been to Greece? Or I mean, do you know anything? What's what's typical for Greece? What, what would you say? Ito or me? <laughs> Is that me or yeah? Yeah, Ito. Maybe you you first. <laughs> been to Greece. Um, <laughs> all I know is the history. Okay. Yeah. Some, uh, that was what was taught in school. I, I, I really don't know. Um, <laughs> food? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think uh, you also will have some friends in Kavala because uh, you could go there for, to give a concert. You know, they These people we are meeting later are organizing great events, and I'm, I'm sure they would love to see you there. And then you can play your music in this beautiful arena there. If, if the lady, what's her name? Is it, uh, what's her name? The one that was presenting chocolate the other day? If Sophia. she comes and we have chocolate with good wine and cheese, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I forgot her name. Sophia. Her uh, name Sophia. is Sophia. Sophia. Yeah, yeah, Sophia. From Ecuador. Yeah, yeah from. And uh, 
was uh, was what do you remember from Greece? I mean, Greece is such a historical country. It it gave us you know the culture in Europe. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe even Switzerland is really influenced by Greece. You know, Greece philosophy and Greece cheese. Yeah, maybe. I think I think you're right that uh, Switzerland Switzerland is only a small golden cage. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Instead of, of Greece, Greece as a culture country, yeah, and I stayed there a few times in uh, maybe in Ephesus, in uh, in Athens. I stayed uh, in uh, at at different islands. It's great, a great, great country, I think, and and I like, uh, for example, I like. Uh, uh, The food very much. Uh, yeah. Yesterday, I uh, to to prepare me for this evening. I ate uh, a lot of castades. You know what that is, castades? Oh, what's that again? Yeah, you can ask our our Greece guy. Yeah, what <laughs> if he knows it? It's it's for only for insiders. Ah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we will ask him. And uh, have you ever tried was uh, tzatziki ice cream? Yeah, can you smell it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we can smell it. And uh, if if you out there want to smell it, please write down comments uh, below. <laughs> YouTube, Facebook, Twitter or Twitch or join us here in the show during the telephone. And uh, Urs, can you, can you help us? Um, mm -hmm. what, is, what is an important question we can ask an, uh, an architect from Greece? Because I don't, I don't know if you, if you have seen uh, some of these um, antique temples or so. Do you know, uh, do you mean there are good architects there? I don't know, but I think if I would be an architect in Greece, it, I, I, I think it's a very, very hard work because uh, a lot of buildings are broken there. The old buildings all are broken. <clears throat> oh. Oh, yeah. A lot of what you do. A lot yeah. of to do. Let 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 yeah, a lot to to repair. I mean, I mean, it was uh, the longer I look at you uh, and I think about of my later architect guest, I, I see some similarities. I mean, do you have relatives in Greece? <laughs> yes, my grandmother. My grandmother has a cousin who uh, oh. who is still in Greece. Uh, The, uh, his family. He's, he died a few years ago, but his whole family uh, is staying in Greece. Uh, so maybe he's um, the, the Greece guy, the architect. Maybe he's an, uh, an, an cousin of mine. Maybe. I don't know. We'll ask him. Yeah, we'll ask him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you uh, for the first minutes and uh, let us jump to uh, uh, Itu Sing. Uh, Itu, um, today we have uh, also a few songs from you in the show. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm a little bit frozen at the moment, but it is not a problem at the moment. Um, but it's I can't, cold in Germany. Yeah, it's cold, yeah. I'm, I have sometimes <laughs> a frozen camera. Um, it's but, winter here. Yeah. But uh, this year uh, you also produced new songs and one of them we want to see now. Can you say something about this song? Again, when you find someone you love and you want to tell the person, I love you just the way you are, with everything you have, you write songs like, it's called All of Me. And it actually was written by a friend of mine in Harare in Zimbabwe. And his name is Prayer Soul. I think I think he's been in Germany a couple of times uh, with with uh, with a colleague of ours, and uh, he wrote the song and I loved it. And I said, "Listen, I want to add my lyrics to this 
some of my lyrics and I'll take some of yours and let's collaborate. And this is what we came up with. So that sounds great because uh, Brea Soul was also joining us uh, in this show a few days ago. So ladies and gentlemen, nice. welcome <laughs> to the song from Brea Soul with lyrics from our musician from today to sing. And here's the first song. Sunday Soul Therapy. Let's go. <laughs> Can't believe I'm singing this song I've waited for so long To finally find someone Who truly loves all of singing this song I've waited for so long to finally find someone who truly loves all of me and I'm giving you all of me I'm loving you I'm loving you completely. 
Today it's my camera is always moving. <laughs> great song, great song. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Can you can can you just say us uh, a few words? What have you done last night on Saturday night? You performed this song. Yeah. Yes, and and we performed this song. Um, it's, I think about it. Maybe two weeks ago, I was dancing with my with my niece in the middle of a street in the township because the song was just released and it was played first time on radio. So I opened my door in the middle of the street. It's a very small, not so busy street. And how now we're doing this dance where I'm moving my hands to the side. And I think a lot of people on social media saw that. So last night I'm playing the song and a few people in front of us, they start doing the dance. I'm thinking, but where did they see this? Because it was just myself and my, my niece dancing in the middle of the street. And the next thing, I think about 30, 40 people were dancing to the same dance routine. Uh, it really felt good. Dancing on the street. <laughs> okay, we see, <laughs> we see another song after your uh, um, discussion with uh, Ludwig about our uh, weekend topic, uh, Courage and Hope. So Ludwig, uh, it's you and Itu totally private. <laughs> Yeah. Only us two. <laughs> yeah. Just the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just just to tell <clears throat> tell you and uh, also uh, the people how this came into being. Like last year, I was totally uh, blocked with work because <clears throat> the work we do in moving school is, you know, creative and uh, working with material and also you know, moving around and uh, trying out things. And so to do these things online, you know, it's, it, I had an idea how to do that. So, so I was really kind of out of work. And then beginning of the year, I thought, I mean, if this is going on online, uh, I need to, to find something. So to, uh, I asked a friend, Milutina, who was here some, some days ago, what can I, what can I do, especially in the pandemic? And she said, Yeah, what are, what are the first words come to your mind if you think uh, about the pandemic pandemic in this situation right now? And I thought I said, yeah, um, courage and hope, amongst other things, you know. And then she said, well, there you have your project. <laughs> so she left me with this idea. So what to do with these two words? But I think it's for us. It's really important in this time. Because if we lose lose courage, if we lose hope, um, that's really bad. And uh, and many people are really in in a bad situation. Even have died or have severely been ill and still struggling. How is the situation in South Africa and Pretoria uh, concerning COVID? Oh, <clears throat> you know, I think just like the rest of the world. Um, You get, you get intermittent punctuations, if I may put it that way. Let me just bring it to me. There are times where everything is good, everything is great, I'm moving forward, I'm optimistic about life. And then you get a punctuation of small things that really takes you off course and, and you, you, you don't see anything, you don't become any optimistic about tomorrow. You don't even think about tomorrow because what you're having right now is that bad. And I'm now if I take it out to my fellow colleagues in South Africa in the music space, uh, it's frustrating because our, our art is based on delivery on stage. It's not necessarily mm. about just recording a CD and putting it on radio. We, we as Africans, we love expressing our feelings through dance and through performance and through expression. And, and when you have just a certain small media to do that, it really frustrates you. Um, what, I mean, there's no answer to everything, but there is truth in knowing that tomorrow will be better. 
I keep reminding myself every single time that I need to wake up every single morning and I need to go into this day with my head up and I take the day as best as I can. Hopefully my actions today will create enough hope for me, will make me courageous enough to face the following day and do the same thing again. Till there's a time where enough of us have been vaccinated in South Africa and we can start living not a normal as we had, but a different new normal that's a little bit more lenient than what we have now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not easy as creatives, but we need to keep our heads up. And whenever a friend next to me is, or even my, myself, if, I, if my friends see that I'm wobbling a little bit, most of them would call and say, Ito, are you okay? When I see my friend that's not, is exaggerating the happiness, I would reach out and say, listen, how do we move out of this? Or is there anything wrong? Uh, but it's not easy. I, I wouldn't, I, it's not easy at all. That's, in, uh, that's interesting to hear for me. Um, um, how is it amongst men? I mean, are you, because you say, you know, your friends call you up or you call a friend up, um, I, are you used to ex uh, talk about your emotions in these times? Or is this, uh, I mean, in, in Germany, men are not as good at that as women, you know, to share their emotions. How about I, look, if we take it there, if, if, if within the creative space, it's people that you know, it's people that you engage with a lot. But if you take it on a bigger global scale, remember African men are not necessarily those that would speak to women or anyone younger to them about their problems. So they would speak to their peers and they would speak to those in the same age group. Uh, back in the day when we used to live in villages, men would sit under the tree and discuss many village problems as well as family problems and try to resolve them with whoever the leader is. So within the African culture, within Ubuntu, which I mentioned the other day, it is okay. And it is normal for a man to reach out to another man and say, can we have this conversation? Provi provided he's not exposing his family to a certain form of weakness, um, that that is a problem and maybe not a problem. It is a problem because if the issues that we have are relating to the family. In most cases, men don't want to expose their weaknesses to their peers. But on the other hand, um, it becomes tricky because this individual has to talk to somebody. Uh, this individual has to express their feelings. Uh, one of the biggest things we have in South Africa is gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. And most of the issues that we, if you dig deeper into the issue, you realize that men, because men are not really necessarily speaking as, as much as women will speak to each other, um, it, they, they tend to bottle things in and two, three months down the line, years down the line, it's a problem. Now, during the pandemic, we had more cases of gender-based violence being reported to the police because these two individuals that used to wake up in the morning and go separate ways to work and only meet in the evenings are now together the whole day <laughs> and not going anywhere. And that brews up problems. And those problems become a, a different story completely. Um, I'm, I'm, it is concerning, yes, in South Africa regarding the, the gender-based violence issues. Um, And, and, and the, the, the resolution is not even in our immediate sight. Um, we, it, is a, it is a bit of a problem, I must say. Mm. Well, the same in, same in Germany. I mean, we, we've, we've seen that also with uh, home-based violence grow, uh, going up and also, you know, children, young people more depressed. Uh, and uh, you said you... Did, did you grow up in a township or are you living in a township right now? I am living in a township, yes. I grew up in a township. Um, uh, Because the houses, they are also very small, right? I mean, people don't can't really avoid each other or so when they're no. in a bad mood. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm surprised my neighbor hasn't knocked on my window as yet. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, Uh, but but you're right. The the I don't know if you've seen the picture of Soweto. Um, there's a 1976 picture of Soweto, which shows it's four-roomed houses, 
um, what you get is a living room, a kitchen, a probably two bedrooms if you like. And some families share those. So you find that the family that that owns the house would rent out the other two houses. So it is that it started being that complex. But as you get more black people in the townships getting educated, uh, that environment changes. Um, if I were to look at how I grew up versus what I'm exposed to now, it's different things. Um, the houses are a bit more extended. The young guys that have graduated are coming back home, like I have now, and they are putting back into their families, whatever they have, put back into the families to improve the house, to improve the standard of school for the kids that are already at home. Uh, I have my niece um, who, thank heavens, has found a job now. Uh, but as I grew up, I knew that part of my responsibility was to make sure that she goes to school. So the dynamics of the township are changing, but the problems are still the same for those of us that are still exposed to public schools, which is not the grandest compared to your private schools and so forth. Um, those of us that are still exposed to only township life and have never left the township because if you haven't left it as yet, you don't know anything else better than what you already have. And sometimes what you already have is too small to give you the proper imagination about life. Hmm. And and did you start uh, your music uh, early or when, when did you decide to, to be on stage as a professional? <sighs> Church, we 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 have a lot of we have massive Catholic. No, let me say my family is quite Catholic, right? <laughs> And I can't say it's all over the place, but the 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 Catholic environment is, is really big in South Africa. And, and I think that's where the drama teaching started. Um, we had a lot of individuals um, from different parts of the world that came through to teach arts, to teach um, obviously, you know, the Bible and you know all the other things. And I really fell in love with the art side of things uh, for two reasons. I really wanted to challenge the kind of art they wanted to teach me as, as an African. I wanted to know that Not all songs are supposed to be one, two, three, one, two, three. We can still have one, you know, your six eights and, and, and so forth. And um, I wanted to know that you don't have to have three part harmonies. You can have two part octaves and, and, and that are not molded, that are wide. And I, and I really wanted to challenge these guys. And eventually I realized that, but hold on, if I write my music in the way that I think it should be done in my head, then I'll be able to express my feelings better. But the Catholic Church is, is where it started when I wanted to, to challenge the arts that I was taught, the music that I was taught. Mm. What, so what would you say today, like in the situation you are in? I mean, you also, I mean, you can't perform, uh, you, you know, you, you don't, I mean, nobody knows the future. Where, where in your situation do you need to take courage now? I mean, where, where is it most needed or where do you, where you see your challenge to take courage? Whew, that's a million dollar question because it's, <clears throat> it's two-sided. Um, I, can, I can lie to myself every single day and say everything is okay and, and survive temporarily. Or I can, I can really hold on to my responsibility as a, as a person. Um, I really think music for me is, I think it's my savior. Um, mm -hmm. My family as a creative is the most supportive. I, my mom is now uh, 68, I think. Yeah. And, and she just went on, 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 on pension, but a couple of years ago. And she really has been the anchor since COVID started um, mm -hmm. for all of us. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm privileged to have someone like that now um, mm -hmm. that really can be the supporting structure when matters hit the fan. Um, I, can only, I can only work as hard as I can now to, to try to put food on the table as best as I can. Um, mm -hmm. And I really hope that things do change because one can only hold on onto this cord for that long. I, I don't think it will be fair for me as a creative 
to still be um, entirely dependent or partially dependent on family when when I should be standing my own ground out there, you know. So mm, no. it's challenging, and I keep reminding myself every day that have your music out, keep performing, um, go do your schooling as you've been doing. I've been writing my exams recently, and just keep your head up because that is your that is your that is you putting courage out there. That is you developing, creating a seed of hope. Mm. In ca- when things go mm. back to normal. I'm hoping that I'm ready enough and I'm evolved enough to take to walk into the new world that we were about to experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what are you studying right now? <laughs> When I was young, I loved computers, right? And uh, Visual Basic was one of my favorite things. So I've decided to go back and touch on my old Visual Basic programming, uh, software engineering um Uh, program at Varsity College in, in in Pretoria, and um, yeah, so far I'm loving it because it's creative. Mm. The subjects that are showing me flames are those that needs me to read, and history, and but anything met with numbers and creative, clearly, well, it seems I'm doing well. Okay, so uh, as a closing question, then, uh, what are you hoping for? I mean, do you have special thoughts uh, uh, um, for the time after the pandemic or things got get more calm or what are your hope for the future? I cannot wait for everyone around me to be working properly again. I am, and when I say properly, I mean, I mean the way we used to. Um, I'm not sure if that will be the same. So I'm hoping that we can get to the space where we, we can get work again and not just in the creative space. Our minds in South Africa are not employing a number of people and so forth. So many other things. But other than that, if it doesn't get to that stage, for me, I hope I would have revamped my career in a better way. Um, I would be more equipped for the new world. That's what I'm trying to get to. I'm hoping by the time we cross the this line and we get into the new barrier, I've designed my life in such a way that it's ready for the new world. Hmm. Thank you so much for sharing that with us in this very personal way. Thanks for being here and uh, giving us your songs. We, we are listening uh, to your next song now. But before that, uh, Urs has to go to bed. He's an old man. And um, it's also the last time, Urs, we see you tonight. So we thank you. Uh, Uh, Dita, um, <laughs> who is giving you the voice, and um, Dita, Dita, how, how many years ago did we start training that? Do you remember as a ventriloquist? <laughs> oh, oh, you, oh you. Uh, well, one moment, one moment. You're muted. Yeah. Try again. It, it, it was, I think, it was twenty two years ago. No, really, I oh, can't believe it. Okay, there, there, there we were together in a workshop about we belly speaking, belly talking, and, belly talking. Yeah. <laughs> yes. and you kept going uh, this uh, craft or this uh, art. So thank you for participating this week with us. Thank you, Urs. Have a nice sleep, and yeah. hope to see you again. And Bye-bye. thank you, Ito. I, I, I will tell you. Your music sounds like Stevie Wonder. No, 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 no. Stevie Wonder's music sounds like yours. Yeah, <laughs> great, very, very great. Yeah, <laughs> I, we, we enjoyed it. And when you when you stay in, in in South Africa next time, we will visit you at a concert. I hope so. <laughs> Absolutely. Actually, right. I invite you to my family house in the township. You come and have lunch with us and experience the true South Africa. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I, but, but uh, I, I take uh, Urs with me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye, bye. Urs. Goodbye and goodbye to uh, Itu. It was a pleasure to have you here in the show and good luck and see you on your tour in Europe. Bye bye. 
So, and now we want to listen to uh, the second song of Ito Sings and enjoy it. The name is Let It Rain and it's Majin. In this present moment All you have is just right now Oh, I Take time to feel love, yeah Leboa baholoba Yesterday is just a mystery Just step outside Thank God you are alive And say, let it rain on you. Let the rain fill your heart with joy. Let it rain on you. Let the rain wash away the pain. Cause when the sun All these lessons that I'm learning are all from you. Oh, I thank you for the love and joy you bring. I stand here and say, yeah, yeah, I let it. when it comes to that part of the song. <laughs> Just let it rain down on me. I know. I said, let it rain down on me. Wonderful song, a great performer, a great art musician, a great artist. Yeah, and uh, Ludwig, uh, we are leaving now the continent of Africa and coming back to Europe. And our last guest of this uh, fantastic week uh, I could uh, celebrate with you. They are from Greece and uh, let me introduce you our guests for tonight. Oh, there's something <laughs> more on my... Left hand there is Marta 
Um, hello, Marta. How are you? Um, hello. Hello. Um, one moment. I leave the name. <laughs> that's it's always on the fly. We have always to work on the fly. This is Marta Santanidou. I hope I hope you I spell it right. And you're not alone. You are uh, with um, Kara Lampos. Turzurkidis. Uh, hello, Kalinista. <laughs> yeah, so great to see you uh, both uh, tonight. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the show so far. And um, we, are, we are really curious to hear about uh, your project. I, I wrote in the um, in the adver adver advertisement that you, Halampos, um, many years ago you you lived in um, near near the Philippi side in a small village. You grew up in a small village, right? Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, and um, yeah. you were living with your grandmother. Why? Why were you living with your grandmother with a little boy as a little boy? Yeah, so I uh, will have a bit with the <laughs> translation now. Uh, Mr. Babis, he is you, mentioning, Martin. yes, so he's mentioning that the, his parents they went to work in Germany, so he had to stay back uh, with his grandmother. How old were you when they went away? Uh, so yeah, he was eight years old and he was together with his brother and his brother was only four, so very young. So at the time the, the situation in Greece was very difficult. Uh, people had to go away to find work, right? It's a little bit similar like today, huh? Είναι Mm. Yeah, but, uh, so yeah, he's actually mentioning that indeed the situation was quite hard back then. So really a lot of people, they were moving abroad to look for work. And especially from his village, he, the village of uh, Kredites, where he was, like 80% of the people were like moving, going abroad, going to Western Germany, but also Belgium, Netherlands. And his parents went in Stuttgart to work uh, in, a, in a factory. Um, I, I've, I've been in this little village you showed me around. Uh, and you were telling me that as a little boy, you were having like the ancient Philippi as a playground. Yes. Στο γυμνάσιο, στο Λύκειο, εργαζόμουν και είχα την ευκαιρία να γνωρίσω αξιόλογου ανθρώπου τόσο στον αρχαιολογικό χώρο, καθηγητέ από το Πανεπιστήμιο τη Θεσσαλονίκη, από το Αριστοτέλειο Πανεπιστήμιο, από το αρχαίο θέατρο, πρωταγωνιστέ του θεάτρου, πάρα πολύ γνωστού στον ελλαδικό χώρο, ερμηνευτέ, σκηνοθέτε, σκηνογράφου. Εμεί, παιδιά, παίζαμε μέσα στο αρχαιολογικό χώρο. Εγώ προσωπικά, επειδή ήταν πολύ κοντά στο σπίτι μου και μία πολύ σημαντική παλαιοχριστιανική, η έξτρα μούρος που βρίσκεται ε, μέσα στις κρινίδες, έπαιζα ε, μέσα στις, στην παλαιοχριστιανική, αγκάλιαζα τις πέτρες, κοιμόμουν ε, πολλές φορές και μέσα στους τάφους ε, που ήταν ανοιχτέ, αλλά εμεί παιδιά τότε ε, χαιρόμασταν το παιχνίδι ε, μέσα σε αυτού του χώρου. 
So yeah, he's mentioning that actually this ancient theater, he was, it was their playground. So as kids, they were like going there and playing around. And also later on, he had the chance as a, when he was in high school as a student to meet their uh, archaeologists, but also people who were uh, performing in the theater. And it was uh, an yeah, amazing experience for him as a kid. And there was also a very old church uh, in the area close by, and many times they were going there. It was, again, an extension of their playground, so uh, a great experience as a kid. Ξεσήκωσαν και αγκαλιάστηκαν από νέου ανθρώπου σήμερα, οι οποίοι είναι φίλοι μου, συνεργάτε. Και έτσι δημιουργήθηκε αυτή η υπέροχη, ο υπέροχο οργανισμό με αρκετού νέου από τρει νομού, την Καβάλα, τη Δράμα και τη Σέλη. Yeah, so he has, he, has, he has some great experiences from this place and he feels really connected with this area. And now he feels really, you know, happy uh, with the fact that our team is actually having the same feeling. We really appreciate this area, and we work uh, in this team in our organization to promote uh, this uh, place. Όλοι αυτοί οι νέοι βασικά αγκαλιάζουν ένα όνειρο, το οποίο γεννήθηκε από τις φωνές του τόπου. Γεννήθηκε μέσα από αυτές τις φωνές, οι οποίες ακόμη κυριαρχούνε. Και αυτές τις φωνές θέλουμε να ερμηνεύσουμε, διότι 8.000 χρόνων ιστορία ο άνθρωπος παρέμεινε, δημιούργησε πολιτισμό, δημιούργησε ε, υπέροχους χώρους, όπως είναι η Αμφίπολη, είναι η, η Φίλιππη, η αρχαία Φίλιππη, είναι η αρχαία Εγνατία που ένωνε την Ανατολή με τη Δύση, τη Ρώμη με την Κωνσταντινούπολη. Yeah, and it's, it's very important now, Mr. Halabros, he's mentioning a few uh, elements and historical facts that are happening in the area, like the archaeological site of Philippi, but also Amphipoli and also the old Via Egnatia, that was connecting the east to the west. And actually what we try to do now with our team is to uh, give, really promote this, this area. And he says that he's very happy that what he used to feel for this place now is what younger people are feeling about this place. And you are uh, you are an experienced architect, so you you did some great projects in your lifetime, right? You were connected to the Athens uh, museums there. Can you say a little bit about your work you have done in your active part? Στο εξωτερικό, βρισκόμουν αρκετά χρόνια στην Αθήνα όπου εργάστηκα. Είχα την, ε, την ευκαιρία να γνωρίσω αξιόλογου ανθρώπου και στην, στην Αθήνα και μεγα, μεγάλε εταιρείε ε, πολιτικού, με του οποίου ε, ε, ανέπτυξα ε, τι σχέσει μου και αυτέ οι φωνέ από την περιοχή που αναφέραμε προηγουμένω, ε, την Αρχαία Εγνατία, ε, του Φιλίππου και τους βουβούς μάρτυρες που λέω, που είναι τα, τα, τα καταπληκτικά μας βουνά με μεγάλη ιστορία, όπως είναι το Παγκαίο, το Φαλακρό, το Μενίκιο, το Σύμβολο, έδωσαν ε, αυτήν τη δύναμη να, να αντέξουμε μέχρι σήμερα και χαίρομαι πάρα πολύ που νέοι άνθρωποι ε, αγκάλιασαν αυτό το όνειρο και το έχουν κάνει δικό τους. Έχουν κατακτήσει πια ε, ε, το νόημα πώς μπορούν να μείνουν στον τόπο τους. Δημιουργώντας, δημιουργώντας προϋποθέσεις για τον εαυτό τους και για τους αυτάδους. Μάτρα, can you all remember that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, it's very, yeah, it's actually very interesting because Mr. Babis is really summarizing the essence of what we are doing here at the moment. So I will do a bit of like more free translation. So in the beginning, of course, he mentioned that he was in Athens for quite some time. So he had the chance to work there with uh, politicians, uh, people who were like in, like in uh, bigger like uh, organizations and etc. And then at the moment he had the chance to return back to the place and what we are doing. So now I will just conclude what we are doing in the moment. We are combining actually the natural elements. He mentioned the big mountains, for example, that are surrounding our area together with the historical and cultural uh, points of interest on this place. And this creates a great combination and makes our area actually unique. 
-hmm. And it's interesting because he's mentioning again, he's, he's very happy that we as young people, we share the same dream. We have the same vision mm -hmm. that we are becoming, you know, I would use the word just excited when we are there, when we experience this place with a beautiful nature and also culture and, and history. Mm -hmm. So that's a good point to start your presentation, yeah. uh, Marta. Yes. Yeah. So please open your windows so I can show the, the the whole presentation. So it needs a little bit time. Uh, yes. And uh, yes, that will be look. That looks great. One moment. Uh, Yeah, so it's your turn. Thank you. Okay, yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, so, hello, everybody. So, as I said, my, my, my name is Martha, and I'm a member of the team of Somethais Philippus. I'm an architect and urban designer. And uh, it, uh, together we are here with, uh, uh, with Mr. Haralabos. Sorry, give me a moment. Yes, so here we are together with Mr. Haralobos Turkidis, who is the president of our uh, team, and he's also uh, an architect. And during the presentation, I will talk to you about our community-driven research team, which is called Opsomethes Philippus, and about what we are doing. So as a team, we are working on expanding the Philippine UNESCO archaeological site into a cultural landscape. And I will elaborate further on the case study Uh, of the Philippi uh, project. So uh, we are a scientific team and we are called uh, Opsometha Philippus. So Opsometha is actually recruiting and gathering young scientists in order to empower the local communities and bridge them with the public bodies. So our goal is to understand, to protect and promote the cultural landscape of Philippi. And as a team, we are studying, we are planning, we are developing a holistic approach for this area with a, a, a great cultural uh, heritage. And we use for this the brand name uh, Philippi Park. So in this image, you can see some of our team members. So our research group consists of approximately 70 members with a strong academic background. And we all support the organization in a variety of fields. So for example, we have some team members who are architects. Some of them are urban designers, agronomists, economists, archaeologists, artists, and many other disciplines. And people from different age, academic, and working background, they are coming together in this team And we are all collaborating to support uh, the vision of Opsometha. Uh, so we are doing our research under three main uh, pillars in order to produce the tools and the techniques that we need uh, to educate the stakeholders uh, about the land, uh, cultural landscape of Philippi. So these three are the civilization, the tourism and agricultural environment. Uh, and in order to uh, communicate efficiently our vision and mission with the communities and all the stakeholders uh, involved, we created uh, the brand name of Philippi Park. And this name serves as the main element to identify the cultural landscape. So we are in the area of uh, Philippi Park that has a great national and international importance. It includes areas of exceptional beauty, uh, as you see also in these images over here, with a great significance for the natural environment, but also the historical uh, and cultural uh, richness. So uh, I will uh, begin in short with a depiction of the natural heritage of uh, Philippi Park. Just to orientate a bit ourselves, we are in the northern part of Greece. And uh, especially uh, the park is located between the mountains of Pageo, Falacro, Menikio and Simvolo, where uh, in the past uh, the Lake Prasiada used to be, and today is the fertile plain of Philippi. And the area of Philippi landscape includes 85 villages and seven municipalities. 
So we can uh, we can also see here that the landscape of Philippi is characterized by great natural beauty. We have the, the mountains just mentioned before, but also natura areas, aesthetic forest and rich fresh water sources of Strimonas Basin, including the Agitis and Zygactis uh, rivers, as well as the peatland of Philippi. Uh, and within this natural landscape, there are also three major canyons, lowland uh, trails, in addition to 24 caves and mines, which have a great, unique and extraordinary natural uh, features. And really notably are the uh, Pagayan mines with the cave of Alistrati and the cave of Angitis, and all of them are open to the public uh, for visits. And then I will continue a bit with a short uh, depiction of the park's historical significance with some uh, dates going back to eight and a half thousand years. Uh, so we have some of the most important historical uh, findings dating back to the prehistoric era and spanning through the modern history. So I will mention just a couple of them. For example, we have the earliest vinification in Europe at the prehistoric settlement of Dekilitas. We have the archaeological site of Amphipolis, the archaeological site of Philippi, which is actually an UNESCO um, a site pro, uh, by UNESCO. We have the Via Ignatia Road, the Battle of Philippi, the site where the Battle of Philippi took place, and also the founding of the first Christian church in Europe by Apostle Paul. So we can see in this map uh, that we have in this area actually a high concentration of both historical landmarks as well as natural landscapes that define the area of Philippi. And this diversity in culture, nature and experience over time, it is really present in every spot uh, of this uh, landscape. So let's see what is happening now. So we recognize uh, that this is a really neat, rich and special uh, environment. So this is how a small group of young researchers who live in the area, they came together. So they collaborate to bring their vision and need to set light to enrich the legacy of their homeland. So people are gathering around the same dream and vision. And Opsomethes Philippus is now born and the new Philippi Park uh, project is being initiated. So I will present you the case study through the tools and the training uh, techniques that are developed by our team in order to activate the community and the institutional factors uh, in the area. So we have a holistic development model for the Philippi Park and we suggest a creation of a network that aims in promoting the cultural and natural importance of the area. So the network is actually based on collaboration between uh, stakeholders. We have private and public stakeholders, and they work together for this goal. We have some example of aspects that they are working on, which is like circular economy, sustainable development, implementation of bottom-up activities, and many more. And this visualization, yeah, we can see our vision actually for the Philippi Park. So the main uh, principle for our design is the creation of this network that connects points of interest and really strengthens the interaction between people and areas. Some examples of activities and methods we implement are the reviving of the natural environment and also the experiential education of uh, citizens. We have the heart of Philippi Park, uh, which is the area of Philippi Pitland. We see some very beautiful images. This is a huge rural area with unique flora and fauna. And pictures are taken here in uh, different seasons throughout the year by our team members. Some extra information about the Philippi Park is that this is the largest thick pit in the world and it's the only one with alkaline soil, which means that it's extremely beneficial for the crops. But what is happening in the moment is that, unfortunately, the land areas in Philippi peatland face severe problems due to lack of knowledge of water management and organic soils. So the team of Opsometha contributes great time and effort in order to suggest solutions for the development of the area and to increase the understanding of uh, geographic morphology and also the history. And we try to suggest management for both natural and uh, cultural uh, environment. And also, again, here, a very nice view uh, of the area, panoramic view. 
Uh, so in order to achieve our goals, we uh, implement a few strategies. So we have strategies about the sustainable water network in rural environment, uh, which includes actions for natural and cultural landscape. So, for example, about the water management, the flora and fauna, but uh, also about the architectural features. And I will continue with some examples of our proposal. So, on the image on the left, we see the existing situation. And, uh, yeah, on the right, we have the, the proposal. So, we propose, for example, in this case, tree planting, uh, an extension of the canal, and also the creation of a biocid route next to the water. Another proposal, something like this. So we introduce hiking trails and laser stops through the landscape. We also make proposal for architectural elements uh, with the use of materials such as wood. We are really harmonized uh, with the surrounding area. And I will continue with some uh, training techniques for the local community that Opsometha is working uh, the, the Opsometha is working on. So we have, for example, the Experience Philippi Park. So uh, once every month or every two months, we organize some field trips. So we invite people to join. These field trips are held in in English and in uh, in Greek, and we do tours and we give information about the area so people can get to know. Uh, more about the place. We have the farmer's basket. So in this case, this is happening uh, usually twice a year. We select some seasonal products. Things are being produced in the area of Philippi and we create a basket and people can order this and become familiar with the products that are being produced in the area. We also have the cycling through Philippi Park. So this is a cycling tour which involves, uh, passes by 24 villages and people are also cycling there to get to know the area a bit, uh, a bit more. Uh, yeah, two more examples of these activities. We have the uh, contemporary art symposium. So this is the first uh, art symposium that will happen this year from the 11 until the 18 uh, of July. Uh, so we invite local artists to take part and create um, uh, art uh, facts with the, under the topic of uh, the, the history of the myth about uh, Persephone. And we have another example about the certified hiking routes uh, on Via Ignatia. So we are following the historical route of Via Ignatia and we create a touristic route and we also some uh, trails for hiking. And all these are like uh, projects that are running uh, at the moment in order to increase the engagement and mainly of the citizens, but also people from the area, but also visitors. And really we try to do this uh, through uh, experience. So this is the key in all of our uh, activities. And uh, yeah, slowly I'm reaching the end of this uh, presentation. Uh, and as we see uh, in this image, the Philippi Park uh, becomes a set of complex networks which connect the cities, uh, the area and the villages with the natural and historical uh, points of natural and historical interest. And this interaction is the, actually the fact that strengthens and promotes the significance of the location. And this helps to achieve our goal to evolve the Philippi Park into a global destination. Uh, concluding, so I'm summarizing the ideas of our team that are applied actually in the case study of Philippi Park project. So we secure the community involvement by applying the collaborative strategies. Uh, we endorse the cultural landscape. We aim in activating uh, the local communities also with uh, examples of our activities that are mentioned above. We are making architectural design proposals on Philippi Pitland. And finally, we encourage the intergenerational dialogue. So the dialogue between younger and older people, as you can see uh, in our team. So this was uh, the presentation and a nice image uh, from the Philippi area. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Marta, for this very nice introduction and uh, now we have a very good overview about the project, and um, can you can you say something about the, how many people are in this uh, team? Three hundred fifty people from all the villages, and the 
ε, δημιουργούν θέσεις εργασίας ανάλογα με τις α, ανάγκες των μελετών και προστίθενται ή α, αφαιρούνται οι μελετές ανάλογα με τα ενδιαφέροντά τους. Yeah, so we have around 350 people who are uh, in the uh, involved, but 70, around 70 are really active at the moment. And every time, uh, according to what is the topic of the research that we are doing, people with a different background are invited to join. So we really, uh, as another thing that we try to do is to keep young people uh, in the area. So in order to avoid people, you know, moving uh, to another place or abroad, so they can stay in their homeland and they can work on something that is based on their uh, field of study and, and experience. And can you tell us a little bit about their profession and where they're from? Are they all uh, Greek people or are they from abroad? Είναι κυρίως άνθρωποι του τόπου, γιατί ο στόχος μας είναι να αυτοί που μένουν να αγαπήσουν τον τόπο τους, να το γνωρίζουν πολύ καλά και γι' αυτόν τον λόγο έχουμε και ε, ε, άλλους ανθρώπους που ασχολούνται καθαρά με την τέχνη προσπαθώντας να εικονογραφήσουμε όλη την ιστορία για να την κάνουμε γνωστή και σε επίπεδο εκπαιδευτικό για να πάνε ε, οι εικόνες αυτές της ιστορίας και στα σχολεία άρα η προσπάθειά μας είναι ένα, ο, το, η εργασία μας όλη αυτή να έχει και ένα χαρακτήρα εκπαιδευτικό ε, εφόσον βεβαίω κατορθώσουμε και πείσουμε Yeah, so it's mainly Greek people and especially people who are from the from the area around. So many disciplines, as mentioned before, it can be architects, agronomists, ergonomists, uh, uh, any discipline. And also we have a lot of many artists and we try to make uh, a connection with uh, schools that what Mr. Harald was mentioned about the educational aspect of this uh, whole process. They try to Yeah, our artists are trying to really depict the the area and trying to share this with the uh, schools and we try also to uh, convince the local authorities because our, our role in this process is uh, it's a bit more like a medi mediator between uh, the local communities and the official bodies because as we know as I would I would use the world uh, language so tend to use like a different language so what people really need, People who live in the area, it's maybe not easy, easily being understood by the official local authorities or even the national uh, authorities. So we are somewhere in between to bridge this uh, gap as a team. Um, what, what is the what is the situation economy-wise in your area right now? The economic situation at this time. Ε, στην περιοχή δεν είναι πάρα πολύ καλή, στηρίζεται κυρίως την οικονομία και εμείς ακριβώς αυτό θέλουμε να, να ανατρέψουμε, να αλλάξουμε το σύστημα το, α, των αγροτικών καλλιεργιών, να αλλάξουμε όλο αυτό το σύστημα, να μπορέσουμε να πιστοποιήσουμε και να δημιουργήσουμε προϊόντα ε, που να, ε, 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 να δημιουργήσουμε υπεραξία ε, και στα προϊόντα, να βοηθήσουμε δηλαδή όλου του ανθρώπου αυτού που κατοικούν να συνεργαστούν μαζί τους και να... Ε, δημιουργηθεί ε, η, η, η υπεραξία και στα προϊόντα τους, στην εργασία τους γενικά. Ε, συγγνώμη κύριε Μπάμπη, εννοείται ότι βασίζεται στην γεωργία. Η... Σήμερα, σήμερα η κατάσταση, γιατί yeah. ρώτησε ε, ποια είναι η οικονομική κατάσταση, στηρίζεται κυρίως στην α, είναι αγροτική οικονομία. Αγροτική. Και βι, yes. οι βιοτεχνίες, που, οι οποίες έχουν αναπτυχθεί τα τελευταία χρόνια και κυρίως στις, ε, στους συνεταιρισμούς που έχουν δημιουργήσει οι οικογενειακούς συνεταιρισμούς. Και βέβαια το κρασί μας που είναι πάρα πολύ καλό έχουν δημιουργηθεί ε, και αυτού του είδους βιοτεχνίες. Yeah, so Mr. Harabos is mentioning that the, yeah, the situation with the economy is not the best at the moment and it's mainly based on agriculture production. So what we try also to do is to certify some of our projects, improve uh, the production Uh, conditions at the moment and uh, we have as we said the agriculture but also some uh, I think the English words like collaboration between some uh, producer and also some family uh, small family factories and we try to promote uh, promote this mm -hmm. 
Είναι οι ευκαιρίε που δίνουν στον εαυτό του και βοηθάμε. Όποιο παίρνει την πρωτοβουλία, έχουμε αυτή τη στιγμή υπάρχουν νέοι άνθρωποι οι οποίοι ξεκίνησαν, χάρη παραδείγματο αρωματικών φυτών, βοτανικών φυτών, δημιουργούν, κάνουν το τσάι. Και του επισκεπτόμαστε με μια προσπάθεια δημιουργία φιλία, σύνδεση όλη, όλη την περιοχή, δημιουργώντα δίκτυα φιλία ώστε να δημιουργώντα και τα και τουριστικά πακέτα να οδηγούμε τον κόσμο που φιλοξενείται στην περιοχή σε όλη την έκταση του Πάρκου Φιλίππων. Yeah, so Mr. Harolabos is giving some examples of some specific farms, for example, that are being created now with some specific herbs or some really specific products. And we try to create some networks between the people who uh, work there and also have the smaller, uh, the smaller production. As we, we gave the example of the basket that we mentioned before, that we try to promote the local products and make people get to know these products. So what is being produced in the area and this just go out to, to the world. Um, yeah, so you, you said you want to help, help that the uh, your scientific community is staying in the area. Um, so how do you how do you help to do that? Because if there is not really, I mean, work to do, because it's mainly agricultural, um where do you, where do you get them the work or how how do you are uh, paid in this effort Martha? <laughs> Ε, καταρχήν, ε, το, το πιο σημαντικό είναι οι, οι ομάδες εργασίας που έχουμε ε, δημιουργούν, ε, δημιουργούν ε, 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 τι φάρμε όπω είπαμε προηγουμένω. Οπότε απασχολούνται οι ίδιοι καταρχήν και δημιουργούμε ερεθίσματα στην κοινωνία, ε, εκπαιδεύοντά την, ερχόμενη σε επαφή κτλ. Και, και αναπτύσσουν, ε, 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 καλυτερεύουν ε, τι. Ε, την, την παραγωγή τους. Ε, άρα ε, η, η καλυτέρευση αυτή ε, της, ε, ε, της παραγωγής επιτρέπει να έρθουν να μπουν μέσα νέοι άνθρωποι οι οποίοι έχουν γνώσεις και αυτές να επιτρέψουν να φτιάξουν και παράλληλες εργασίες με, την, ε, με τις παραδοσιακές καλλιέργειες παραδοσιακές όσον αφορά την, την αγροτική. Άρα ε, συμπληρωματικά με τις παραδοσικές με την παραδοσική καλλιέργεια διαθίζουν και άλλες πιο σύγχρονες πιο σύγχρονη μέθοδοι οπότε η ενασχόληση γίνεται κυρίως με τους νέους Yeah, so the example that Mr. Haralabos is giving is that we have the traditional way of producing products, like the agricultural products, but then with the help uh, of the new scientists, we can really improve this one. So it's more like a supportive uh, thing next to the traditional existing uh, way of production. So just to bring this to the next level, and uh, that's the, the main uh, idea. Mm -hmm. So what I... <coughs> what I uh really liked about when I visited you there was this network you have and this working together young and old. So Marta, I want to talk to you now and um, because you you are living in Amsterdam normally. Now you're back uh, for uh, remote work. Uh, why did you decide to engage in this project in the first place? What made you interested in? Yes, so yeah, that's true. Uh, I'm uh, based at the moment in Amsterdam. So I work there as an, as an urban designer, but I participate in the team of Psometha. So I was aware of the work that Psometha is doing. And I also, I, I, uh, I acknowledge the fact that it's a very important uh, effort that they are trying to do. And uh, yeah, during this uh, the whole COVID situation, working from home and everything remotely, I realized that I had the chance to join easily their meetings via the uh, digital. And I thought it's important that we all participate and try to 
uh, support this call. For me, it doesn't really matter where you live. You can be based in Amsterdam or like in Australia or New Zealand or uh, like in Kavala or Athens, and you can still uh, support uh, this good cause that this team is doing. And the fact that you mentioned in the beginning about the network from young and old people, I think this is also very important and really something that I found very nice in the team, these two things, the collaboration between old and young, but also the collaboration between different disciplines. Uh, I can work together with someone who is an artist or maybe an archaeologist, and I get to know more about this place, about my homeland. And yeah, living abroad doesn't mean that you, you don't look uh, back to your uh, homeland. And it's always nice. You get new experiences. You know, when you live abroad, you get new ideas, and then you bring it back. And then I'm here and talk with Mr. Haralambos and the whole team, and we exchange our ideas. And we this is the way to have the, the best result, I think. And how, how is it to have these different professions talking to each other? Because, uh, I mean, we, we do this also in moving school, like in the university, students from all departments, you know, can participate in workshops. But then sometimes it's a little bit difficult that the engineer is understand what the artist means and vice versa. Uh, how, how do you do you come along this challenge or is it very easy to understand each other right away? Yeah, it, it is true. It is a challenge. I mean, me as an architect, I, I love uh, drawings and plans. So for me, everything needs to be, you know, really visual. But on the other hand, you might have someone who is really into uh, history and literature and they're more like about talking and using words. But this is the beauty, I think. It might take a bit of time to really communicate and find the common ground between uh, the different disciplines. But we, all of us, you know, you bring some a bit of extra information depending on the topic and your educational and professional background. And then we can bring our proposals and our ideas to the to the next level. So it's indeed a challenge, but it's a, yeah, a, a, something that we really enjoy. And I hope that, yeah, I think that Mr. Haralambos has a similar uh, <laughs> I will. I will ask. Him. <laughs> I will ask him later. Just in, in another question. So uh, you said about this working old and young together, and this is is great. But I think also might have some pitfalls. You know, uh, older people, experienced people have this long experience. You have maybe young ideas. Uh, how does that work together? I, I, I assume that's not always without conflict. Yeah, yeah, this is true. But I think when you see this, um, you know, this situation from like a broader perspective, then I think you realize the how good is this? How good effect do you have? Because I think we are just completing each other. I, I just give an example of what we are doing now. So we have from one side, Mr. Haralabos with a great experience. He has so much knowledge about the site and everything. Yeah, he doesn't speak English very well, so I'm helping him here out. But that's what I mean. We are just uh, completing each other. So uh, I think it's only, yeah, a, a, a good thing. Yeah, of course, sometimes it's it's hard, but uh, I tend to see the you know the bright side. <laughs> στην αρχή μια αδυναμία ε, επικοινωνίας, αλλά πρέπει να, να δηλώσω ότι είμαι τόσο χαρούμενος και τόσο ευτυχισμένος που βλέπω νέους ανθρώπους να λένε πως ε, τους, έδω, τους δόθηκε η ευκαιρία να αυτοεκπαιδεύονται, να μαθαίνει ο ένας από τον άλλον, να αρχίζουν δηλαδή να επικοινωνούν με καλύτερο τρόπο και πράγματι έχει δημιουργηθεί ένας μικρό κόσμο που δεν χρειάζεται να, να, να μισολαβήσει απολύτω τίποτε και κάθε του ενέργεια είναι κατανοητή από τον καθένα. Είναι πάρα πολύ όμορφο να, να δει κανεί πώ μετά από ε, έξι χρόνια ε, υπάρχουν νεότατοι άνθρωποι οι οποίοι λειτουργούν ε, πάρα πολύ όμορφα ε, στι σχέσει του, στι καθημερινέ. Yeah, so Mr. Harambos is mentioning that in the beginning there, there was indeed a bit of a difficulty in the communication, but he can see that people are improving their skills of commun communicating and they tend to really learn from each other, cooperate with each other, and he's very happy to see this uh, final result within uh, our team. Because then you, you actually you create some skills, you improve your skills through the team, and then you can use this for your uh, profession mm -hmm. and also like your your personal, professional and personal uh, life, of course. Development, yeah. 
Uh, Herr Lampos, what, what did you learn in this project from the young? Πάρα πολλά πράγματα. Ε, ε, έχω μάθει τόσο πολλά. Ε, άρχισα να γνωρίζω καλύτερα τον εαυτό μου, τους ανθρώπους και τον τόπο μου. Και γι' αυτό τώρα συγκεντρώνουμε και μουσικούς για να βγάλουν τη φωνή, τον ήχο αυτού του τόπου. Ε, επειδή έχουμε την τύχη να έχουμε ένα από θέατρο πάρα πολύ σημαντικό που εδώ και 60 χρόνια ε, ε, γίνεται το Φεστιβάλ των Φιλίπων όπου ε, όλες οι αρχιτεκτονικοί ε, τραγω, ε, τραγωδίες ε, ε, εμφανίζονται από αξιόλογους ανθρώπους στον τόπο και αυτό μας επιτρέπει ε, να ε, έχοντας αυτή την καταπληκτική ε, υποδομή ε, να την ε, κάνουμε να λειτουργήσει και με τις δικές, και με τις δικές μας γνώσεις δημιουργίες ε, είτε μουσικές είτε συγγραφικές να γραφούν θεατρικά έργα κτλ. Αυτή η ανάγκη Πλήρωσή μου, η προσωπική όπω και πολλών άλλων ανθρώπων, γίνεται επιτέλου. Γνωρίζουμε δηλαδή πολύ καλά τον τόπο μα ιστορικά. Και ακούμε πάρα πολύ καλά το τι θέλει να μα πει ο, 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 ο τόπο αυτό μέσα από τα 8.500 χρόνια ιστορία. Yeah, so Mr. Harabo says he, he learned really a lot from the young people. He also learned to love this place a bit more. And yeah, through, sorry, I, I take my notes for this. <laughs> uh, so yeah, he's fulfilling his personal need uh, to promote better this place. So he gave an example that we are uh, collecting some uh, artists and musicians that they will create actually the sound of this place because Uh, in this side, we have the Ansi Theatre of Philippi, and for the past six years, we have a very big uh, festival with theatre plays and uh, music uh, performances uh, over there. And we try to, you know, uh, uh, also use this as a as an extra uh, element. Mm -hmm. And, and you, Marta, uh, you, Marta, what did you learn from this project so far? For your personal life, maybe for your personal development, I'm mean, you very skilled person uh, working as an architect, but like for your personal development. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, first I would say I would mention that I really get to know the history of this uh, of the place better. All these historical facts, things things that took place uh, in this area, get to know more about the nature and the local products and all these facts about the place. So this is really close to my hometown. So I'm I'm from Kavala, and this is really close by. Get to know this better. And I would say for my personal, yeah, the personal experience, I would say working together with people because. I think this is the key for everything, working together with people from different backgrounds, people who have like different ideas, because then you really need to be a patient, explain what you are thinking, what other people are thinking, really understand each other. And I think this is the most, uh, yeah, the most important. And I mean, you belong to one of these uh, young people who, who go uh, abroad for work because there's not enough work in Greece right now. Um, and now you're in this pandemic. What, where, where do you need courage right now in your present situation? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, I think we need courage in every day of our life. <laughs> uh, yeah, in, in every moment. Uh, but I think it's easy to get this courage because I think you get this courage from the small things in life. So it can be either from people from your close environment, but it can also be by working in, in a team like this. So you you meet motivated people and then this motivates you uh, also so you do uh, things you meet people you get more experiences and then this uh, yeah encourages give you gives you more courage because you know in in this whole thing we are not alone and it's very important that we share uh, our feelings and we get uh, power and you know and force and courage motivation from from others mm -hmm. and your hope for the future for your personal future or maybe for your project uh yeah i hope that uh yes relating a bit to this uh COVID situation that things will become uh soon uh better but we also get to get a lesson from from this that we really through this period you know uh, communicate better with each other uh yeah get a lesson uh for the future 
And regarding our project, I really think that we, especially, for example, like from this event, we gave the uh, inspiration for other people to do similar activities. Uh, come together in communities, really work with each other, uh, because this is what we are doing. But I think the most important is we, we spread the word. So we say, hey, this is what we are doing. Uh, we think it works and it, it really does, as you can see from our own experience. And I really hope that people are like all over the world or in other places, they come together, they share the same vision, the same dream. And yeah, this is how you can uh, make good things. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I, I agree totally. And um, you need tourists probably, you need people also to go there, right? It's 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 not is, is it how many tourists do you have is uh, do you want more or is are there enough people coming or yeah i think i passed this question to mr hararabos Όμω τώρα από τότε που έχει μπει στην ε, UNESCO ο αρχαιολογικό χώρο, βλέπουμε ότι αυξάνεται συνε, συνεχώ. Γεννιέται όμω και μια άλλη πύλη που είναι η Αμφίπολη, που είναι πάρα πολύ σημαντικό και εξίσου ε, όπω ε, η Φίλιππη, η Αμφίπολη. Οπότε ε, γεννιέται μια ακόμη πύλη μέσα στο πάρκο Φιλίππων, όπω είπαμε. Ε, υπάρχουν μοναστήρια, αρχίζει ο θρησκευτικό του, ε, τουρισμό και υπάρχει, υπάρχουν τα. Η Ινοποιία, που είναι πάρα πολλά και πάρα πολύ γνωστό το χρυσί τη περιοχή. Άρα, εμεί είμαστε ακριβώ γι' αυτό οι νέοι, γι' αυτό είναι και η Μάρθα και όλοι οι, οι, οι σχεδιαστέ, οι αρχιτέκτονε, οι πολιοδόμοι, οι γεωλόγοι, οι γεωπόνοι κτλ. για να σχεδιάσουμε τι καλύτερε συνθήκε, να δώσουμε προοπτική. Και γι' αυτό θέλουμε και, την, και τη Μάρθα να είναι εδώ κοντά μα, να έρθει να, να καταθέσει τι ιδέε και τι γνώσει τη. Και αυτό το πάρκο να δημιουργήσει προϋποθέσεις ώστε ο τουρισμός όχι απλά να αυξηθεί, αλλά όσοι έρχονται να είναι ευτυχισμένοι και χαρούμενοι από αυτά που θα δουν, από τις υποδομές που θα δημιουργήσουν οι νέοι άνθρωποι. Αυτό έχει μεγάλη σημασία. Το τι θα δημιουργήσουν οι νέοι άνθρωποι, βλέποντας το, το μέλλον τους με αισιοδοξία. It sounds positive. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, exactly. It is so. Uh, yeah, talking about numbers. So he, Mr. Harabos, is mentioning that the main um, touristic attraction at the moment is the archaeological site of Philippi, which is also uh, a monument protected by UNESCO, about uh, yeah, like one million. But we have also the second one, the archaeological site of Amphipolis, which is also very important. Uh, but we have not only the historical, as we call it, like tourism, but we have the tourism related to uh, some churches, all churches located in the area, uh, but also tourism related to local products. We have uh, very good wine. I think you mentioned early, earlier in the discussion about Greek wine. So yeah, that's true. We have a good one uh, in Kavala. Uh, yeah, and he says that it's very important that young people make proposals and we will be able to yeah, promote the area with good proposals, make sure that we attract uh, tourists and we promote, but in all uh, directions. So not only culture mm. or not only nature, but in uh, every uh, different type uh, mm. of tourism. Halampos, uh, um, you, you're keeping this vision now uh, for a long time. So, but I'm sure there were a lot of setbacks and frustration how did you keep this vision so long? What gave you the courage and perseverance? Βοήθησε λίγο μάθα. Ναι, ναι, οπότε λέει ότι υπήρξαν κάποιες δυσκολίες σίγουρα στο ενδιάμεσο όλα αυτά τα χρόνια που ασχολείστε με τη συγκεκριμένη πρωτοβουλία και το συγκεκριμένο όρομα και τι ήταν αυτό που σας έδινε πάντα το, το κουράγιο να συνεχίζετε παρά τις δυσκολίες στα, στα διάφορα σημεία της διαδικασία. Μόλις, μόλις έφτασα εδώ ως αρχιτέκτονας, προσπάθησα από διάφορους τρόπους, τόσο από τη δουλειά μου την επαγγελματική, να διακινήσω ιδέες, σκέψεις μου κτλ. Γιατί επίση ότι είναι πάρα πολύ δύσκολο. Γι' αυτό μπήκα και ακόμη και στην τοπική πολιτική σκηνή, να ασχοληθώ με τα κοινά μέσα από ένα θεσμικό πλαίσιο. Διεπίσης ότι είναι δύσκολο και αυτό. Οι φωνές που έλεγα προηγουμένως από τα παιδικά μου χρόνια του τόπου, βλέποντας 
όλο αυτό το τοπίο, αλλά κυρίω ζώντα μέσα στον αρχαιολογικό χώρο και γνωρίζοντα την ιστορία του τόπου, ε, δεν με άφηναν ε, ε, ήσυχο. Είχα συνεχώ προ... ε, γεννιόντουσα συνέχεια πράγματα τα οποία δεν μπορούσα να υλοποιήσω με του υφιστάμενου θεσμού. Και όταν πια ε, ο, ε, κατάλαβα ότι δεν μπορώ να κάνω τίποτε ούτε από τη θέση ε, ε, του τοπικού που ασχολείται με τα κοινά, με την πολιτική, ε, 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 μπήκα πιο δυναμικά με την, με την εργασία μου, ψάχνοντα ανθρώπου. Όταν ήρθε η περίοδο τη κρίση και καθόμουν στα καφενεία, διεπίστωσα. Ε, συζη, άκουγα συζητήσει παιδιών που ήσαν απελπισμένα και κατηγορούσαν τη δική μας γενιά, τους μεγάλους ότι καταστρα, ε, καταστρέψαν τον τόπο και αυτό με πλήγωνε διότι εγώ ακόμη ε, αισθανόμουν πάρα πολύ νέος Α, Κύριε Μπάμι, συγγνώμη, να μεταφράσω μέχρι εδώ <laughs> και μετά συνεχίζουμε yeah, I just have to yeah, just, uh, stop and then I translate and then we, we continue uh, so the idea is that when he came uh, back to Kavala he tried through his profession as an architect but he was also involved in uh, uh, as a local politician working together with the local uh, authorities to do something for this place and always his driving force was as he mentioned he grew up in this area uh, the ancient theater was his playground and also some old churches so this was all Uh, this experience was always in his mind and he always wanted to do something uh, something important for this but because he didn't uh, had the chance to you know do th through this profession or the current existing local authorities or organizations so he had the idea to start something new and uh, uh, yes he was mentioning also like in the beginning of the crisis he was meeting young people who were really looking for something Uh, and yes, now I think he can continue, <laughs> and then I continue yeah. with the translation. Ναι, ε, για, για αυτό το λόγο, ακούγοντας αυτά στα ναχολιό μου, δεν ήθελα τα παιδιά αυτά τα νέα να να είναι απελπισμένα, λέγοντας ότι ε, αυτά που έχουν σπουδάσει ο, ε, είναι νευματικός καρπός, είναι σπόρος που έχουν χρέος να το φυτέψουν κάπου για να το μεγαλώσουν, να το προσέξουν. Δεν είναι ανάγκη να λένε δεν υπάρχει δουλειά και πρέπει να φύγουν στο εξωτερικό. Άρα ε, οι ερωτήσει μου, τι έχει σπουδάσει εσύ, αυτό. Άρα έχει σπόρου που ε, μπορεί να του φυτέψει εκεί. Ε, προβληματισμένα αυτά μου λένε πώς, πού δηλαδή, πώ. Ε, ε, σε ένα όνειρο. Είπαμε το όνειρο, το αγκάλιασαν αυτό το όνειρο και διεπίστωσα, επισκεφτήκαμε τον τόπο και διεπίστωσα με μεγάλη χαρά ότι το αγκάλιασαν και αυτή τη στιγμή είμαστε εδώ. Να συζητάμε πω το όνειρο το αγκάλιασαν και σχεδιάζουμε, το υλοποιούμε. Δεν κάνουμε μελέτε για να βάζουν στα συρτάτια. Κάνουμε μελέτε για να τα φτιάχνουμε εμεί οι ίδιοι. I think you can understand from his tone, he's really you know, happy, enthusiastic about the whole process. So what he's mentioning is he did more kind of like a survey asking people who kind of uh, disciplines they had and he really didn't want the younger people to be desperate and not they Uh, make sure that they don't have to go abroad to work on their field. So he tried to uh, make a group of people and actually uh, I would use the words that he's doing, like hugging the dream, because he had this dream about this area to really make something out of it. And he's very happy that young people are being uh, making a group around this area. They share the same vision and he's very happy that now we are here. We have this group of young people that are really equally enthusiastic with Mr. Haralabus about our initiative and our uh, our effort uh, in this uh, organization. And he's really optimistic also for the future that we are now here and then the next step will be continue working. And it, it, as he's emphasizing, we are not doing just some studies to let it be. We try to do activities, as we mentioned, as I said during the presentation, really activate uh, and educate the area, people from the area through experience. So do all these kind of activities and visits and engage the community uh, of the area. How much of your work is voluntary and how much is it paid? To, do you get also money from the European Union or from the city? Uh, Πληρώνονται ανάλογα με τις μελέτες μας. Έχω, έχουμε τη χαρά ξεκινή, να, να υπάρχουν αρκετές μελέτες και όσοι δε, 
γύρω στου ε, 25 έχουν, ε, έχουν πληρωθεί, αλλά θα λέγαμε ε, ε, μέχρι 60 άτομα έχουν πάρει χρήματα. Αλλά τα χρήματα είναι πάρα πολύ λίγα μπροστά στην τεράστια δουλειά ε, που γίνεται. Ε, και βέβαια το, οι, οι μελέτες που, που κάνουμε, ε, που έχουμε κάνει, ε, δεν πληρώνονται στο πραγματικό, του, πραγματικό τους κόστος, ιδίως ε, προς τις ε, τοπικές αυτοδιοίκησεις. Ε, όμως πιστεύω τα προγράμματα από την Ευρωπαϊκή Κοινότητα είναι ε, λύτρωση. Θέλουμε να ξεφύγουμε τελείως από τις χρηματοδοτήσεις των, ε, ε, της, ε, του, των Δήμων, και θέλουμε να απελευθερωθούμε και από αυτό το, το, το θέμα. Γι' αυτόν τον λόγο ε, στρεφόμαστε αποκλειστικά προς τα ευρωπαϊκά προγράμματα. So he's uh, mentioning... Yeah. Uh, yeah, so he's mentioning that some, or we do some studies and researches and depending on the study and the research, then we receive some money from local uh, authorities, but we also receive money from the uh, European Union uh, supporting this uh, research uh, project. He's mentioning around 25 to 60 people receiving the research, but as I said, depending on the, on the research. And uh, we would like to, yeah, it's, it's a really big help the uh, subsidy from the European uh, Union for implementing and doing our uh, research and studies uh, mm. in the area. Σα έχουμε χορηγούς, έχουμε βρει αρκετούς χορηγούς, οι οποίοι ελπίζω να μας βοηθήσουν. Yeah, and we are also looking, he's mentioned, like for sponsors and people who would like to uh, give money to promote the, the work of uh, Opsometha. So if uh, somebody like tonight well, is inspired uh, and says, I want to help and want to engage myself, they can contact you? Yes, of course. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, Kiri and Bobby. No, no, it's... <laughs> yeah, I would say that uh, everybody is more than welcome to join. And uh, yeah, please get in contact with us for also like all of our activities and even for example, like our local basket with projects can be shipped everywhere. Also like our e-shop and yeah, also come to Greece and yeah, to do a tour. So everything is, uh, it, it, it would be very nice if we inspire people to visit our site and even contribute to our work. This would be uh, extremely amazing, I would say. And Bobby, so my, Bobby's εκεί που μπορούν να βοηθήσουν, είναι ότι θα θέλαμε να δημιουργηθεί ένα τοπικό πανεπιστήμιο στην περιοχή με όλη αυτή την προσπάθεια που κάνουμε. Άρα είναι πολύ σημαντικό οι συνεργασίες αυτές εδώ και η οποιαδήποτε συμπαράσταση και, και βοήθεια και συμβουλή μας είναι πολύ σημαντική. So there is an idea of creating more like a local university based on the experience of the people at the moment. And of course, your help. And uh, we are really grateful and thank you very much for your invitation. It's very important for us to be here today and, and share our dream and our vision for the area of Philippi. And any kind of this collaboration is, is a very good uh, yeah, step for us. And yeah, once more, thank you very much for the invitation. My last question to you, Halampos, what is your hope for the future when the pandemic is uh, gone or maybe more calm? What is your hope for your personal life, for the project? Ναι, ναι, η επίδα μετά το τέλος της πανδημίας, είτε σε προσωπικό επίπεδο, είτε για την ομάδα και για τους φίλους γενικότερα. Το σημαντικότερο πράγμα για μένα, αλλά που πηγάζει από την ομάδα, είναι να δω όλους τους νέους ανθρώπους αυτούς χαρούμενους μέσα από την καθημερινή δημιουργικότητά τους, να είναι χαρούμενοι με αυτά που φτιάχνουν. Η δική μου προσωπική ε, ε, ζωή ε, εξαρτάται πάρα πολύ από το πώς, ε, κατά πόσο επικρατεί και γονιμοποιείται η αισιοδοξία ε, στην περιοχή αυτή. Θέλω να βλέπω χαρούμενους ανθρώπου τίποτα. Yeah, so it's very interesting. Yeah, he's mentioning that he's he's happy if the younger people are happy, and he's very happy if he sees them to be really optimistic. And his uh, his feelings are really related uh, to the young people in in the area. So this is his hope to see people happy uh, in the area. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Waiting you. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes, of uh, course. You have uh, to come by and try our nice wine, of course. <laughs> yes, we, we, come we already our, talked about yeah. 
come with our moving <laughs> school team. Yes. So, Stefan, we have our last music before we close. Yes, that's true. And um, we want to say goodbye to you both, to Amsterdam and um, to Kavala. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Thank you But very please, much. Uh, Stay a little bit on your camera yeah. when, uh, until yeah. we close, and yeah, we can yeah. have a little. Don't don't move. Don't lock out uh, because <laughs> we see you after this song. Yeah. So Ludwig, you see, um, I'm always frozen at the moment. <laughs> that's that, <laughs> that's nice. Yeah. Now you're laughing because we had this already with you. Yeah. Sometimes sometimes if the if the technique is not moving then it's not moving. Yeah, but we are here at Moving Stories with me or without moving me. <laughs> And <laughs> that's, that's lovely. It's really lovely. So um, what we can say at the end, um, the last nine um, shows we had, lots of uh, nice talks and all these uh, streams are out there. So if you like to, to see them, Go on the on the page uh, we uh, already have art.tv on YouTube and all the Facebook pages and Twitch pages we used. So go there and uh, take a look around. Maybe you find some interesting talks we did the last days. And Ludwig, how is it going further on? Yeah. Um You best thing is like also to follow moving stories or moving schools so you will be uh, stay informed and also for us uh, Stefan and also other co-hosts like Gamu and um, Urs uh, we, we had really great fun this nine, week, uh, nine weeks <laughs> nine weeks nine nights <laughs> and uh, we said yeah let's let's continue maybe not every night but uh, we'll see how <laughs> in, in what sequence we can do it Okay. <laughs> Stefan has also other things to do, but um, wasn't it wasn't it great fun? What do you? Th yeah, it was a great fun, continue? and and uh, we learned a lot. And but but now I'm really handicapped by always freezing here, and I don't know why this happened. Not now. <laughs> and um, I, I I jumped to another camera, but it's not moving not at working. the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is. This is crazy at the moment. It, it would be would be nice. I mean, tonight uh, we didn't ask again for your comments, but uh, Stefan was observing the chat. Nobody uh, wrote. I hope you didn't fall asleep. Um, <laughs> but uh, we are, we are really um, hopeful that you you know come in contact with us, give us feedback. You know, how did you like these shows? Uh, Do you have anything to uh, to mention? Anything you want to talk about? Maybe in the future, any subject which could be interesting for you. So please come in contact. Also, if you like to connect with uh, Moving School and uh, see what you can do with us together. I think what uh, Ra Lambos just said, hugging the dream is really important. So we wish you. From our, all our heart, that you hug your dream, your personal dream, and uh, because in every one of you, if you are on stage or not, you know, if you are uh, on the screen or not, in every one of you is potential to change something, to give somebody to peep something to people, support somebody, or change something something in your surrounding. That's what we firmly believe, and that's what's also in our like goals of moving school to help you to de develop that in case you're not sure. So, but I'm sure, and you come come by and uh, help, let help you to find your um, call because we need people who go forward and have courage and hope. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Ludwig, for being. Uh hosted with me here in this show and uh, E2 Things thank you, a big hug to South Africa again and to all our guests and now we see your third song of this night and this is the ending song of this uh, whole week at the Berlin Design Week and 
come uh, positive through this pandemic. Stay healthy with you, yourselves and your loved ones. And now the song we see is uh, produced live at the State Theater and the name is Kivena. Good night and love you all. I have been dancing in the dark And I have made this cold my home <laughs> But you came into my life And you showed me how to Love Bye-bye.